Hi there and welcome to this lesson on higher computing and in this lesson we are going to look at how to read um, a text file. Now we're going to look at a particular type of text file called the CSV file that stands for comma separated values. So if we have a look at the first file we're going to have to read I have opened up in a text editor. Now I'm running on a Mac but the, the notepad would work just fine. What you will see is we have a line Sorry, let's take that last line there. We have a file full of 20 names and guidance houses. And you will see that I, I know there are 20 records because, or, or 20 entries because there are 20 lines here. And each name and guidance house is separated by a comma. So what we're going to do is read one line at a time and then separate them into names and houses into two separate parallel arrays. Okay, so the first subroutine we're going to have is going to um, read the file. So it's function to open and read the file. And we're going to find it as read details. Now we're not going to pass any parameters in, so I'm just going to put no, no uh, values in there and go into the next line. So if I quickly look at my file again, you'll notice that um, we have 20 um, pupils and 20 names and 20 guidance houses. So I'm going to need to initialize my arrays to have 20 elements in them. So I'm just going to call this one names array. I'm going to initialize it with no value. Sorry, I forgot an equal there. So I'm going to initialize it with 20 values. And likewise, I'm just going to copy and paste that and have a house array called the same. So that declares my two um, arrays. Now I'm going to um, need a temporary array but we'll deal with that later and I'm going to initialize a counter equal to zero as well. So to open a file there are various ways to do this one but we're going to do it with with open and in here we are putting the file name which is called pupildetails.csv. Now there are various ways to read this file and we're going to open it as a, a, an object called read file. And then what we're going to do is we're going to read each line of the file at a time. So read the first line of the file. Now there's an easy way to do this. There are various, sorry, there are various ways to do this, but the one we're going to use is we're going to say line equals read file dot read line. So that reads the first line of the file. And write strip, Python actually views this uh, the end line character as a slash n. So write strip from the right hand side takes away this um, new line character. And then what we're going to say is that while this line has text or has a value in it, that means there there's some there's some text. And we can do that by saying while line. What we're really saying there is while line is true, while it has an object in it. Um, and Python will take care of this for you. And what we're going to do is we are going to split the file on each comma. Now this is actually fairly easy. There's a predefined function for this one. Oops, sorry, the spacer. Um, you say items equals line dot split and you tell it to split on the comma. So this will thankfully take care of most of the, 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 hard, the hard work for us. It will take the first line and if we look at that first line you'll see that it is Nicola and Blackfriars. So it's going to put Nicola into part one of the, if I just move that over there a little bit, it's going to put Nicola into part one of that items array and Blackfriars into part two. You've got to remember that arrays unfortunately do element uh, in index from zero, so we're just going to need to remember that one. So the first element has the um, name, so we'll say is items, sorry, names array, sorry, names array. Now we use a counter up here, so we're going to use that, and we're going to say counter because that'll mean that we start off at zero, equals whatever was in the first element of the items array. And then we're just going to repeat that 
but this time it's not going to be the first it's going to be the second element and that has the guidance house so it won't be going in the names array this time it would be going in the houses array and it isn't item zero it will be items one and we always want to increment the counter by saying counter equals counter plus one we can however short this shorten this to just say that but both are perfectly acceptable and then last but not least what we have to tell it to do is to go and read the next line of the file now we've already told it how to read a line of a file so we're going to copy it and we're going to paste it down here and what this will do is then return back up to that while statement and then say right do i have more text here so basically this line this uh, conditional loop here will carry on while there is some more text in the file and then last but not least it's usually quite good just to put an input line here and say file read please press enter that way you know that it's it's, it's happened okay and we will have to return our names array and return our houses array so let's just go and write our little main subroutine to deal with that so we'll have a main subroutine and what i'll do is i'll need to grab names and houses out of my function I'm, and i am using copy and paste here to check i get the right names because remember python is case sensitive so at the minute if i run that code okay sorry i forgot to call my main subroutine okay and i forgot to put a colon there um so if i run that it won't do much other than tell me the file's been read so our next subroutine is going to need to display the contents so if we display the details now we will need to pass in some summaries here so i'm going to call this one names array and the houses array and call on there now there's not much to this one it's just going to display all the names and the houses so i will print the name sorry and i will print the house And then what I will do is for x in range, and I'm grabbing the length of my names array. I'm going to print off whatever was in names square brackets x, and put a wee space there. And I'm going to put in the next part, which would be my houses array. And I sorry, I completely forgot that my formal parameter is called names. So that should work. Now, if we save this and we just modify our little main subroutine here to call display details, but this time we'll need to call display details, but we'll need to pass it in what we need it to do its job. So we'll need to pass in names and we'll need to pass in houses. So if I just run this code here, file red, okay. And what you'll see is is what actually working but it's not really formatting it out all that great now there is a nice easy way to do this one what we can do is we can add a tab character here and then just unfortunately sorry it's trying to help me there um we just concatenate this all together and i'm just going to grab that again down here and if i put it instead of the space there i'll just copy paste what that should do is lay it out nice and neat for me and put a tab in between oh what did i do there extra speech mark there we go yeah, so that's better what you'll see is it's used a tab character now obviously some of the names are quite short not really all that much to there are other ways to do it but we're just going to be quite happy with that at the minute so so far we have read the details and display the details now what we're going to do is we're going to put a breakpoint here and we're going to walk through that file now one important thing to mention is that the file is only open until the end of this line here so once this line finishes here okay the file is now closed so i'm actually going to put a comment line layer that says file closed so if i go to run and instead i select debug 
what we're going to do is we're going to step through this code here. So what you'll see is I'm getting a breakdown of all the variables that are going on down here. And if I just step to the next line in my code, so what we'll see is that items should be, be a way to get a value here. So items now has the values nickel and black fire. Ignore these comment lines there, but they're just useful to see. But you'll see I've got a list of, uh, sorry, an array of two elements. One is Nicola, the name, and the second one is the gui guidance house, which is Blackfriars. And what I've done is I've now put names array zero, and you'll see that that's been updated so that Nicola is now the first element in the names array. This is going to do the same. So items one is Blackfriars, so that's going to be the first guidance house. So you see that the first guidance house is Blackfriars. This should change next to say that counter is going to get bigger by one, which is great. And then what we're going to do is read the next line. And what you'll see is our line of code, uh, sorry, our line of files says James and Collie Hill, and we have stripped the new line character. So because there is a um, new code in there, this will evaluate as true. And it's going to carry on going through this one now. And we would just carry on going through and we'll see if I just run through a couple of times to see I've got four names in there. And what I'm going to do is just right click and run it to the cursor. So they, sorry, for, run it to the cursor just so it, I don't need to go all the way through the code. So you see by the time we've gone through that subroutine, I've got a whole array of uh, names and I've got a whole array of houses. And that is pretty much how we will parse, I read and process uh, a comma separated values file.